Jalen Brown on the quick take. the other way. Little hesitation blows right past Middleton and lays it into the foul. 53 to 33. Felt like tonight um, it was what we were the first 10, 11 games before the road trip where we were playing with high effort and we were playing with connectivity and we showed moments of great execution. And Richard gets blitzed. Oh man, Lillard took his cornbread and slams it over Hauser. Zingas on Middleton here. Reverse in a drive-by. Tatum. Left right free throw line extended. Drives to the cup and he sends it down with a big two-hand dunk. Nine-point game again. 126 to go. Bucks need to work quickly. Trying to close it out. Middleton from deep. Strings it. And it sets the screen for a little. Brown switches on to him. Three by Dame. It's officially Dame time. Three seconds to go. Beasley will take it into the front court. Puts up a three at the horn. He hits it. And the Bucks going to lose this game by three points in the end. 119 to 116. Too little, too late. But it was a valiant effort from Milwaukee here tonight. Just a team effort. I think we bounced back and regrouped from last game. Uh, sometimes you need those. You might need to lose when the regroup, regain focus. Uh, I love the way we came out uh, and started the game. Um, they, made, they made a run late, and uh, that's a really good team. So I just like the way we responded late in the fourth. All right, first game of the day. This was so cool. GA calling the game for his son, Cole Anthony. Boston, Orlando, East Group C. Boston can clinch the group with the win today. They did not do it, as you know, but I'm going to show you the highlights. How about that shot? Hey, man, Boston started out early, though. Mo man. Wagner, massive game. Cole Anthony's playing well. I know. I Ball the rim, baby. Ball could you get up me. like that? No. Who, me? Could G. Your yeah. dad, GA, yeah, no. No. <laughs> Look at you, quick. emphatically. No. Nobody in the 90s can jump like that. Do you like the technicals when you hang on the rim? I think they kind of, come on. Spinning. If it's in a crowd, you got to hang to you keep guys hang. from going under you. Jalen Brown at 18 points in the game. Paulo Bancaro from deep. They got a lot of guys that can make decisions with Orlando. Yeah. They can handle the basketball. They got a lot of skill guys. And Smitty, you can't take away just one guy. They got four or five guys. Everybody on the floor can make a shot. And that makes them tough to defend. And to your point, they don't do dumb things. They're not beating themselves this year. And that team is playing defense. And right now, a young team with – and you got to remember, Smitty, they got a lot of first-round picks they on do. this basketball team. So it's time for this group to start smelling themselves a little bit. 57 bench points for Orlando. They improved to 3-1 and one in group play. Boston dropping to 2-1. and one. Paolo Bencaro, 23 points. Here he is with 3D. Playing the best basketball in the league. And so my inclination would just be to believe that they're going to keep playing that way. But I also know that the Nuggets and the Celtics are teams that have a long view. And I'm not sure that they're going to be invested in something in November that might take energy for later. So... I definitely have those two teams there, but I'm watching some other teams on the come up. A team like the New Orleans Pelicans, for example, who's off to a really good start to this season after a very disappointing last year. Maybe they could use it as a springboard, but there's no way you can look at the Celtics and Nuggets and not recognize that, you know, two weeks into the season, they're playing the best basketball. I'm thinking Celtics, you're right about that. I got two teams out West. I'm thinking... The Los Angeles Lakers and the Golden State Warriors because of the leadership of LeBron James and Steph Curry, respect, respectively. You have two superstars in the NBA, two champions, four-time champions, who are specialists in recognizing and seizing moments to really send a message while also building their individual brands, not to mention those collectively around them. I think that when you look at it from that perspective, those two guys can catch others sleeping and ultimately end up with, you know, being the first champions of the in-season NBA tournament. I think I would look at LeBron James and Steph Curry and, and, and think
think that one of them will find a way to sneak into the play. That's my personal opinion. But the Bucks, they had some early hiccups. I put them on my list of teams that I was a little bit worried about here. Now they're starting to figure it out a little bit here, Richard, and we've also seen the Celtics have some ups and downs as well. Do you think the Celtics are as far ahead of Milwaukee as we once thought they were? No, I think the only thing that they were ahead on was actual experience, right? Like they had had a group that had played together. I know you're talking about Porzingis, but when you're a couple of best players and then your coach, like they're like Milwaukee had a brand new coach and one of the best players in NBA history be added to your team and you lost Drew Holiday. Chris Middleton was building his way back. So I wasn't as worried. You were just paying attention to the numbers and saying, oh, okay, defensively they have to change things. They have to be a little bit more aggressive in the Giannis and Dane pick and roll. So I wasn't as worried. I think that the gap is very is as close end, right? But sometimes teams that close are uh, close end. Okay, he can make sure. up words yeah. just like that. Yeah, 100%. Okay. We all can make up words. But if you look at Denver off to a great start, you look at teams that have had familiarity <laughs> are typically off to a great start the first, like, 10 games because they have that advantage. So I think this is an even matchup, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Has it closened in your mind, Ramona? Yeah, right, the gap close is close in. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, Milwaukee still has some work to do defensively. I know they won five in a row, but they've given up 115 points in those five wins. And respectfully, they haven't been against the best team, save, save from Dallas. So they, they're scoring a lot more. They're, that, that pick and roll between Giannis and Dame is looking better. I like that Chris Middleton is back out on the on the court. Mm -hmm. But their, their defense, that's what Adrian Griffin was brought there to do. That's why they liked him so much, because of how great he is defensively and the way he schemed against them when he was the coordinator there in Toronto. So defensively, five wins. I'm giving up 115 points in those wins. Still got some work to do. Zach? There's still a gap, I think, between Boston and Milwaukee. But look, gaps in the big picture don't matter when you're talking about head-to-head -head matchups. Yep. The head-to-head -head matchup is what matters and what advantages you have over the other team. And we're going to finally see that on Wednesday. One advantage the Bucks always have, Giannis. You know, when they got Dame, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I think everyone just kind of shoved Giannis, Giannis out to the side in the MVP conversation. It's a little early. It's a little early to get an MVP. But I'm just going to say, 30 a game, 10 and a half rebounds, almost five assists. He's shooting 67% on twos. That would be the best number of his career. And he's a menace on defense. It's amazing that almost nothing about his numbers has changed despite adding an all-time great scorer to his team. Their chemistry has really improved in the last week or 10 days mm -hmm. on the pick and roll. So the Bucks, they've stabilized, but to me, Boston is still the best team in the East. But tomorrow, I mean, you have been as excited as any of us for this game that, that, that we finally get to see them go head-to-head. -head. Is there something that you can learn, Zach, about these two teams that you're going to be watching specifically that will tell you, okay, this gap is either bigger or smaller than we thought it was? It's always interesting. What cards are you willing to play in the regular right season? Up. What do you want in your back pocket for the playoffs? But two things. Number one, for Boston, who guards Giannis? It used to be Grant yeah. Williams a lot. He's in Dallas. It's often Al Horford a lot. He's been coming off the bench all mm -hmm. season. Do you dare switch that starting five for this matchup? Mm -hmm. And then for Milwaukee, how do Giannis and Brooke Lopez, who are best around the rim where they can protect the rim on defense, how do they guard this five-out super shooting lineup where it's you just can't hang around the rim because there's nobody near the rim? How does Brooke Lopez guard Porzingis? Who does Giannis guard? Does he guard Jalen Brown? It seemed like it got frustrating. Um, I think, you know, we had some turnovers, uh, and I think they just, uh, I think they were more physical than us. Uh, and, you know, when they went on runs, we just weren't able to respond, um, how we normally do, I feel like. They're, they're a physical team. Minnesota and Philadelphia both kind of more physical teams. How do you come back when you that? That seems like the recipe to beat you guys is, is being more physical. Uh, we just got to play tougher. Um, you know, take care of the ball, get to the spots that we want to get to, uh, you know, play with more pace because uh, they try to slow you down. Jason, um, you guys have been nominated in the East of today. Um, this team, you guys under 100 points. How good defensively is Orlando Magic? I mean, they're a good team. They're well coached. Uh, they got some talented guys. They got some guys that compete. Um, you know, they uh, 
they play hard and they play together. Do you think with so many fouls thrown to your way personally that that was able to kind of slow down the momentum for you guys? How many times we got fouled? No, you personally. Uh, oh, you're saying we was fouling? No, you know how many fouls, like a lot of them, fouled, they fouled you a lot. And it seems like the momentum just couldn't change. But it just seemed like you were just able just to pick up your foul shots. I'm confused. What you saying? I'm asking, do you think because of so many fouls that was thrown your way, uh -huh. that it was harder to to pick up momentum to change the game around in the fourth quarter? Uh, not, I mean, we just, we weren't able to cut the lead. We couldn't get stops um, when we needed to. You know, we were fouling them. They hit some threes. Um, they got some layups. So when we needed to get a stop, uh, we weren't able to. When we did get a stop, right, you know, we missed some layups, missed some threes, you know, didn't shoot the ball well from the free throw line. Uh, so all those things kind of add up. Jason, you guys are a team that uh, has the second most made threes per game in the season. Did just seven of twenty-nine tonight. What what challenges did the Orlando Magic present, uh, especially in, uh, in guarding the three-point line? Uh, I mean, they're a long team. They got some long defenders. Uh, they went zone a little bit, uh, but you know, we only shot twenty-nine threes. Um, obviously, we didn't shoot the ball well, uh, so you know we gotta get back to you know moving the ball, attacking the lane, drawing two defenders, and kicking it out. You know that's how we normally play. What's your view of the in-season tournament so far? Kind of feel like a playoff game tonight, uh, today, this uh, afternoon. Um, what's your experience so far playing for the in-season tournament? Um, is it kind of like a playoff game so far for you guys? The intensity? Uh, I mean. I guess so. Uh, I know fans like it, and uh, you know, the, even though the courts are slippery, uh, I like how they, <laughs> I like how they look. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Jason, on a technical foul, when you dunk, um, like I saw you talking to the ref afterward, you know, was there an explanation because it didn't seem like you hung onto the rim for a long time? Uh, I mean, that's a rule that they just implemented that, quite frankly, I don't think make any sense because it's like anybody that's ever played or dunked the ball, you know, your momentum, you know, just trying to make sure that, you know, you're stable when you land and make sure nobody's underneath you. Uh, so I don't know, maybe they want me to just let go and fall on my, you know, on my back. Uh, so I got a tech forward and that's a rule that they put in place. For what reason? I don't, it doesn't make any sense, you know. Right? They want to protect the players, and you know, anybody that's ever played, your momentum pulls you that way. You're just trying to make sure you're good. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe they just want me to let go and see what happens. Jason, how, how disruptive was not having Drew Holiday today, and then at the end of the third, fourth quarter, not having Chris Paul does does that change the whole chemistry offensively? Because that seems like it. Only 24% from the three-point line? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we're a much better team when everybody's healthy. Um, but throughout the course of a season, there's going to be nights where, you know, certain guys are in and out. And uh, we can't use that as an excuse of why we didn't win the game. Uh, we still got to figure out, uh, you know, a way to get the job done. Last question, Gary. Jason, you were sick a couple of days ago. How are you feeling <clears throat> Were you close to missing the Milwaukee game? And if you've gotten over uh, the illness, how, how, are you, how, how did that affect you? Uh, I mean, I'm still getting over it. Um, it's just like a cold. Everybody's it's going around. Uh, so, you know, I've been congested. But, uh, I mean, it's not like, it's not why I didn't hit a, a three tonight or anything like that. Uh, maybe I was a little more... Chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh youtube của mình Và ngày hôm nay mình xin đọc phần 2 của câu chuyện Cô bé bán diêm Nhưng sau đó ít lâu thận chết đã đến đưa, đến thăm bà em Đưa bà ấy đi đâu mất Ba em làm ăn thất bại Tài sản lần lượt bỏ nhà Em đi theo bà và gia đình Và gia đình em cũng đành phải chia tay với ngôi nhà xinh xắn 
có dây trường xuân leo bám quanh tường nơi em đã từng có những ngày đầm ấm em cảm thấy mệt mỏi ngồi nếp vào trong góc tường của một ngôi nhà đóng cửa kín mít và không thấy ánh đèn chiếu hắt ra em cố thu đôi đôi chân của mình thật sát vào người nhưng nó cũng chẳng giúp em thấy ấm lên chút nào mỗi khi mỗi lúc như càng rét buốt hơn thì phải nhưng làm sao có thể về nhà cái xó tối tăm chật hẹp luôn được ban tặng những loại chửi mắng nếu không bán được que diêm hay không ai bố thí cho một đồng nào về nhất định thế nào cha em cũng sẽ đánh cho em và lại ở nhà có xét ít cho đâu cha con em ở trên gác sát mái nhà mặc dù đã gom tất cả rẻ rách nhét kín các khe hở gió vẫn hiên ngang lọt vào đi thăm khắp cả nhà lúc này đôi chân đôi bàn tay của em chẳng chịu nghe lời nó cứ cứng đơ ra chà giá mình quẹt một que diêm lên mà sưởi cho đỡ giết một chút nhỉ em thầm nghĩ thế giá mình rút một que diêm ra quẹt dấu và tường mà dơ mới ngón tay nhỉ em không thể nào cưỡng lại được ý nghĩ đó rồi em liều quẹt một que diêm diêm bén lửa thật là nhẹ em nhìn đóm ngọn lửa từ lúc xanh lan dần chuyển sang xanh biếc trắng da rực hồng chạy dọc theo que gỗ sáng chói trông thật là xinh đẹp tuyệt vời em trộn đôi tay lại để que diêm vào sữa và hơ nóng tưởng như mình đang hơi trên thật lửa trên lửa than hồng ôi ánh sáng của ngọn lửa thật kỳ diệu biết bao em tự chừng như đang ngồi trước một lò sưởi trong lò sưởi ché được tiếng nọ tí tách của than củi và hơi nóng tỏa ra khắp nơi mới thật tuyệt làm sao ôi sao mà dễ chịu đến thế em vừa duỗi chân ra để sưởi bỗng một ngón ngón cái bên tay cầm diêm nóng bỏng lên lửa phột tắt lò sửa biến thành biến mất que diêm đã tàn hẳn em bần thần cả người khi chặt nghĩ đến việc cha giao cho đi bán diêm đêm nay về nhà thế nào được video của mình đến đây là kết thúc xin chào các bạn và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh youtube của mình và ngày hôm nay mình xin đọc tiếp phần 3 của câu chuyện cô bé bán diêm em quyết định quẹt tiếp que diêm thứ hai diêm cháy và lửa lại sáng rực lên bức tường như biến thành một tấm rèm bằng vải thật mỏng khiến cho em nhìn thấy mọi vật ở trong nhà bàn ăn thịnh soạn đã dọn ra khăn trải bàn trắng tinh trên te trên bàn bày những cái bát trắng bằng sứ quý giá giữa bàn là cả một con ngỗng quay to béo như một điều kỳ diệu đã xảy ra là ngỗng ta bỗng nhảy ra khỏi chiếc đĩa và mang cả dao cắm trên lưng tiến về phía em que diêm vụt tắt bầu trời giá rét và cả bức tường khô cứng lạnh tanh lại trở về bên em cuộc sống thực hiện ra đã đẩy lồi mơ mộng của em dạt ra một bên chẳng còn bàn ăn thịnh soạn chẳng còn ngỗng quay nào cả mà chỉ có đường xá vắng ngắt gió rít lên từng cơn lạnh buốt tuyết không ngừng rơi phủ trắng khắp mặt đất thi thoảng có một vài khách bọ hành lang đầy đường đổi trang bị làm ấm từ đầu đến chân vội vã tìm đến chốn hẹn hò chẳng một ai đói hoài cho tình cảnh nghèo khổ của em bán diêm cây diêm thứ ba được em quẹt lên lửa rực sáng trước mắt em hiện ra một cây thông noel lớn và trang trí thật lộng lẫy mà em chưa từng được gặp bao giờ thật nhiều ngọn nến được thắp sáng lên trên cành lá xanh tươi và rất nhiều món đồ chơi đủ màu sắc trông thật hấp dẫn em với đôi tay nhỏ bé của mình về phía cây thông diêm lại tắt tất cả các ngọn nến cả những món đỏ xinh đẹp đều bay lên trên cao cao hơn cao mãi rồi biến thành những ngôi sao lấp lánh trên bầu trời em tự nhủ chắc hẳn có ai đó vừa mới qua đời vì bà nội hiền học của em trước đây thường nói khi có một vị sao đổi ngôi là có một linh hồn bay lên trời với thượng đế em chẳng thèm đếm que diêm quẹt ngay sau đó 
và chị chăm chú nhìn ánh sáng xanh tỏa ra xung quanh và bắt gặp bà em đang mỉm cười với em em thật sung sướng hạnh phúc reo lớn lên ôi bà ơi bà cho cháu đi cùng với nhé cháu biết rằng khi quê diêm tắt thì bà cũng biến mất như lò sưởi ngỗng que cây thông ngọn nến đỏ chơi ban nãy cháu xin bà đấy bà đừng bỏ cháu ở lại nơi này một mình tội nghiệp khi xưa trước khi bà về với thượng đế bà đã từng bảo cháu hãy ngoan ngoãn rồi cháu sẽ được gặp bà cháu đã rất ngoan bà cháu đã gặp lại nên cháu van xin bà dẫn cháu đến thượng đế cháu sẽ xin ngài cho cháu được ở chung với bà cháu tin rằng người sẽ không từ chối đâu Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc. Xin chào các bạn và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo.